All right, here we go. Here's the three Bible verses that they covered uh, there. I've seen and I testify uh, that this is the Son of God. That's John the Baptist, right? We're going to get into this just a little bit. We'll read the context around it. And then the Acts 1.8, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Everybody say power. Let's get it. Let's do the power signal, right? Everybody, you will receive power. And it isn't just our own power. This isn't something. This is power that the Holy Spirit imparts in us. In a spiritual way, we can we can lift weights, we can get in shape, we can do a lot of things in power, but if the Holy Spirit isn't empowering what God intended for us, we can make life look real bad. And so we got to allow the Holy Spirit to empower us. So Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem where they started, in Judea, and it's a little further out, and then Samaria, which represents a couple things, distance and cross-culturally. Because Jews at that time weren't, weren't connecting uh, with, with Samaria. They would walk around Samaria. They would put on extra miles to walk around Samaria. And here Jesus is telling them, you're going to be my witnesses in, in Samaria. Which means he's just breaking down all cultural barriers at that time. He says, you're not hiding in your own little cultural barrier that you've had. No, we're going to, this whole thing is for each and every person uh, in every culture that's around. Um, and then to the ends of the earth. And we represent the ends of the earth. You can't get uh, much further than maybe from here to Israel or to in other parts of the world where Jesus has gone. This is something that God has done throughout the world supernaturally by the Spirit of God. You're sitting in here today because the Holy Spirit has imparted something into your heart and mind about the truth of God. And then John 14, 6 said, Jesus answered them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And so this was a, a direct uh, revelation that Jesus was given to his readers at that time and his and people that were in front of him that he alone was the way the truth and the life now let's let's look at the text that wrap around each one of these verses the first one that they talked about it that they learned about was John the Baptist and Jesus baptism let's go let's read that turn to your neighbor and say let's read this let's read that to your neighbor and say okay okay kind of quiet in here today all right this summer uh, this summer uh, camping trip must have took place this weekend all right, so John 123, and this is the Gospel of John. So you got two Johns that work here that you're seeing. John 123, and then it says, John replied. So the first John 123 is where the, the Gospel message is in the Gospel writer of John, uh, the Gospel writer. He was one of the disciples, right? Then he is quoting, or he, this is from his, his, his version of the Gospel, and it says, John, which is John the Baptist, replied in words, of Isaiah the prophet, he said, I am the voice of the one calling out in the desert, make straight the way for the Lord. So here's John the Baptist. They're asking him, who are you? You ever ask somebody say, who are you? You, you know, we say it a little more with attitude when we're trying to ask him, who are you? You right? We say all like that. And they might have been like that to John the Baptist. Who are you to say something? And John the Baptist, I am the voice of the one calling out in the desert, he said. You read about me in the book of Isaiah. He said, I'm the voice of the one called out in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. I baptize with water, as he did. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who will come after me. The thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. John knew his role. One of the most important things that we got to find out in life, what is our role in the kingdom of God and be at 100 on it? What if John the Baptist said, you know what? I don't really feel like going out to the Jordan today. How I many so some of us are like that, right? But we need to recorrect and direct our attitude to be 100 or we're going to miss out on the call that God has in our life. So the next day, turn to your neighbor and say, the next day. Yes, so the question I put up here is, so first of all, who was John the Baptist? This one is, what did John the Baptist proclaim? So the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And this is the one who I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water is that he might be revealed to Israel. So John the Baptist was a front runner to Jesus to basically almost put a lamp or a light on the fact that here is the path of the one who's coming to follow after me that I am just to tell you about, I'm not the one. That's, our, that's all of our role. All of our role is to let people know who Jesus really is. So he goes on to say, Jesus came from Galilee. Now here's the baptism. So we're jumping from the Gospel of John to the Gospel of Matthew, okay? And Matthew said this. He said, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. 
and do you come and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened and the spirit of God descended on him like a dove and lightning on him. And lighting on him, not like lighting on him, I'm sorry. And the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love with him. I am well pleased. And I know we all look for that kind of a voice. And there's some of us voice, that voice we're, we're chasing so bad that we chase into so many situations and relationships and sometimes bad relationships and bad situations because all we're looking to do is hear that voice and saying, well, this is my son or daughter who I'm well pleased. God is the one that can only affirm you in that way. And here it is. He's affirming Jesus in front of everybody. So here you had the Trinity at work. Right here you had Jesus, God the Father, with his voice speaking to Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus. And he had the dove representing the spirit. And then Jesus himself, the son of God. The Trinity was represented at that moment when Jesus was baptized. Now he was about to begin his ministry. And why was Jesus baptized? A lot, a lot of you know he wasn't, he was without sin. So why did he have to be baptized? John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Jesus didn't need to, he didn't need to repent because it, he was sinless. So the reason for his baptism is it goes back into the Old Testament where it was tradition when somebody began their ministry that they were baptized to begin their ministry. And as, as Jesus was ready to begin his ministry, he was 30 years old. Priests typically began their ministry when they were 30 years old. So all this was fitting into place 100% properly according to God's word and God's plan. So here Jesus is baptized by John, not for the reason we need to be baptized, so there's like four different baptisms mentioned in the Bible. There's this baptism that was tradition throughout the Old Testament to baptize somebody into their ministry or prior to their ministry. There was the baptism of John the Baptist, which was a baptism of repentance, which means that was preparing the way for Jesus to, for people to, because really we need to re receive Jesus into our hearts. This was a cleansing of our need to receive Jesus. So that was John the Baptist. Now there's a Christian baptism that is symbolic of the death and resurrection. It's like a water grave. If you get saved as a, uh, or you give your life to Christ as a Christian, become a Christian, following that is water baptism. So hopefully everybody in here, if you haven't been water baptized, have you uh, given your life to Christ? That's the next step. Okay, so then there's another baptism that Paul talked about in, the old, uh, in Corinthians. It wasn't a Christian baptism, but he used it as a, as a way to try to explain uh, eternal life. Okay, here's John's testimony. John said, then John gave this testimony. So this is in the Gospel of John, and he's talking about John the Baptist. Gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known it except the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen, John says, I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. John the Baptist testified that Jesus was the Son of God. Let's go to the next slide. So that's the first thing that the kids learned this weekend. The second thing they learned about was Pentecost and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's, let, let's read about that. So Jesus segue for the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus was living on this earth, he, had a, he created a segue, and this was really what you find in the first eight verses of the book of Acts, where Jesus created a segue for everyone to prepare to receive the power of the Holy Spirit in order to ignite all the ministry that they were supposed to do to proclaim the gospel from Judea, Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Let's read it. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey, let's read this. So after this, his sufferings, he, Jesus, showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them for a period of over 40 days. How many days? 40. Over a period of 40 days. And spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. We just read about John. And in a few days, you will, re you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the next slide. And here's a question we have for all of us. Did you receive the Holy Spirit power? Verse 6 said, so and this is Jesus. Uh, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time 
going to restore the kingdom of Israel. So Jesus, this time, this, the, the, he's sitting with his disciples, and he's telling them that the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out on them, that we're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the disciples talked about restoring the kingdom to Israel. Honestly, I don't believe the disciples still at this point understood that Jesus' whole purpose for coming was to reunite us to the kingdom of God in heaven and not an earthly kingdom. Jesus never said anything about restoring Israel, even though they were under Roman rule at that time. But there was, as many of you know, there's prophecy about Israel becoming its own nation and maintaining it at the end times. And so what we see right now is that 1948, Israel wasn't even their own country until 1948, miraculously, that God said, okay, now's the time. You need to be your own country because the end is near. That could, the end couldn't happen unless Israel was their own country. God had deeded that land to Israel way back when he talked to Abraham. So that land was going to be Israel's eventually. However, at the time of Jesus, he was accomplishing something bigger than that. He was accomplishing our homestead in heaven that could only come through Jesus' death and resurrection for us. We did the crime. We sinned. Jesus had to come into our time. And this is what he, that verse right there, it seems like at that point they really still didn't quite get it. Lord, at this time, you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? No, Jesus was probably in his mind saying, it was kind of not all that right now. It's really about being restored to the kingdom of heaven. And without Jesus, like we say in here, don't, get, don't be caught dead without Jesus. Because we only get one chance. So let's go to verse 7. It say, he said to them, it's not for you to know the time or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive. So again, he just basically sidetracks that issue because that's not the issue at hand. And that's for us. It's not. Sometimes we get into issues that aren't the issues at hand. The biggest issue at hand is where are we with Jesus? Where are we with allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and to be a, a real player in the society that we live in for the kingdom of God? And that's the. So let's let's do like Jesus did. Let's set aside all the distractions. And let's get on to the real question. Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We already mentioned the different, uh, what this represents, that, that you got Jerusalem is right, that's, that's their closest culture within their own uh, group, people group. But then you get outside into Judea, it gets a little more distant than that. It gets outside of your own family, and outside of, uh, not even totally outside of the people group yet, but then Samaria is definitely cross culture We're all called to be cross culturally impacting the world for Christ. Because a lot of times we have, a, we, have a, we have sometimes a tendency to stay within our culture and let somebody else worry about that. No, we're called to love all over the culture. And that's what the kingdom of God really looks like. And that's what we're called to do. And it, we're not called, can I straighten out one other thing too? Jesus doesn't care about our traditions and cultures as much as we do, okay? He cares about what he's telling his disciples right here. Some of us are, are get really concerned about preserving our culture. And, no, let's preserve the Jesus culture. That's, what, that's the only thing that matters. When we die and go to heaven, there ain't nobody going to be worried about what culture. Well, I thank, thank, thank you, Lord, for helping me preserve my culture, you know, in our dress code, in our, in our, you know, the how, all our mannerisms. No, we're called to have a Jesus culture, all of us. Amen. We created all that other stuff. Just to, actually, Satan, in, in sometimes it parts that, it's almost a way of causing dissension and, and, and battling within about things, again, that don't matter. That we get in circular arguments about things where Jesus is in the center. Let's get to the center where Jesus is. And then we realize all these other things don't matter. Right? right. So let's make sure we make it a priority to bring people into the center of Jesus Christ. Because they're not at there. There is all it is is a Jesus culture. Because throughout the history, you can look at some of the traditions of, of people trying to bring the gospel to certain areas. And, and sometimes when they're trying to preach, they're bringing their culture as if that's part of Christianity. And it's not. There is a Jesus culture, and that's what Jesus is telling the disciples right here. You know what? It isn't about you know what you're thinking right now. It's about everybody needs Jesus. And so you will be my witness, and you're going to go to the ends of the earth. All of us sitting here right now, we're called to the ends of the earth. We're called to impact people. You might be the only person that knows Jesus among your whole family. You might be the only person that knows Jesus of uh, people that you're going to come in contact with. And, and the thing that what we just said before, you always got to keep in your mind. Don't be caught dead without Jesus. But we have friends 
Visible. Why did Jesus come and die? Just for another good story? Did he have to go, did he have to go through that desert, death and resurrection that was prophesied all throughout the Old Testament? That old book, Old and New Testament, it, it all flows together. You can, you can just separate. You can take the New Testament over here and, and read just the Old Testament. And, and God really, uh, throughout the first uh, 4,000 years, people were getting saved based on their commitment level to Jesus Christ even before he was born. Of knowing that God is going to send a Savior. But then in the New, New Testament, New Covenant, he, he just lays it all out. And that we are able to understand the love that God has for us. Let's not withhold that from other people. We can teach people a lot of things. And especially parents in here. Our responsibility as parents, one of my biggest game changers in my mind when I became a parent was like, this is God's child. It ain't my child. The, the, my responsibility is help them to know God because someday I'm not going to be here. And if I don't teach them to know God, the world's going to teach them how to know the devil. And so by witnesses, Jesus is saying that we need to let people know. Be, be a testimony. What happens when somebody gets put on the courts, uh, the, the stand up at, at, in a courtroom? They testify to what they've seen, right? Once you experience Christ, our job is to testify to what we've seen. So let's allow that testimony to be real and live around us and among our family and friends and people that, because life and death re, re, really is relying on us sometimes. So let's go to the next thing. So then after this, after Jesus said this, he was taken up before their very eyes. And a cloud hid him from their sight. So Jesus hung out with his disciples for 40 days. 10 days after that, what happened after 10 days after that? That's when Pentecost came, right? And then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they began to speak in other tongues, and the other gifts of the Spirit were present. But really what happened is everybody was in Jerusalem at this time when the Holy Spirit came upon their disciples, and it was almost like if, if uh, you know, I was raised on a farm, and you think of, you know, the wheat field when it's almost ready to harvest, it's so dry, you could drop a match on it, and it would light a fire. And it was almost like the disciples, when they caught the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on them, it was kind of like, you know, if almost, if you had, like back in the day, this isn't, this is kind of a, uh, like a brutal thing, but they used to, in order, countries that were trying to just, um, take over other countries, they would, you know, light animals, put a rag on them or something and have them run through the, 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 the fields and it light all the fields on fire. I don't know if this is a good illustration or not, but my mind just visualizes that, how the Holy Spirit, when the disciples, that first day, when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they went all over the earth, and everywhere they went, caught fire. Why? Because they were so, all they couldn't help but catch fire, because they were, on, they were really on fire. And it's in a good way, not a bad way. And all of us, if God has really made a change in our heart, we, we're going to want that for somebody else. If God has really made a change in our heart, we're going to, we're, our desire, we know that these things in this earth that, are, that come and go, but God is going to be there forever. So that's the second thing, the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on your own. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the next slide. And here is the power of this at work. So Saul to Paul. Many of you know the story of Saul. And we're going to get a little brief uh, briefing of it again here right now. Let's go to the next slide. And then Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus made this alive and real to Paul and caused him to become Saul. Let's go to the next slide. Saul engaged by Jesus. Acts 9.1. It says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that he might, that if he found any, any there who belonged to the way, which was the new believers, whether men or women, that he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice to say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now Saul becoming Paul. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men that were traveling with Saul stood there speechless, and they heard the sound, but they did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, and he opened his eyes, but he could not see anything. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink. The obedience of the servants. Now here in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision, Ananias, yes, Lord, he said. And the Lord told him, go to the house of, 
uh, Judas on Straight Street. I always like saying that. Straight Street. Um, and asked for a man from Tarsus named Saul for his praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him and restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all of the harm that he has done to your, your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority of the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. That is how well known Paul or Saul was. Isn't it amazing? And then the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry out my name before the Gentile and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And the, the amazing thing, so here's Ananias. He goes to the house and enters it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he, could be, and he could see again. He got up and he was baptized. This story of Saul kind of maybe represents really all of us. At some point we had to come to the realization Jesus is who he said he is. For many of us sitting here we haven't had that revelation that Paul had where, where we, we got knocked to the ground because God created a light so bright that it causes us to sit. But sometimes when we're in the presence of God, when you're seeking God and praying, there are times when the presence of God is so strong that it seems very similar to what Paul just experienced right there. We all need to change. Let's go to the next slide. We're going to have the praise and worship team come back real quick right now. And we have three questions that God has for all of us. The first one is this, have you been baptized in water into the family of God? See, the first thing that Jesus did is he came and then he died and then he rose again. After he died and rose again, he said, really, we need to die to our old self and be born again into the kingdom of God. Remember in chapter 3 of John, he had this conversation with Nicodemus, who was a religious leader, and he said, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. How do you get born again? You ask Jesus to come into your life to forgive you of your sin, and then the Holy Spirit becomes in and dwells. Because Jesus doesn't like climb in there, but it's a trinity thing. Without this is the Holy Spirit's job that comes into you. Not only does he regenerate our dead spirit, then the Holy Spirit empowers your life for God's purposes. So the first thing then after that is that you get baptized. Why? To symbolize that you're, it's like a water grave symbolizing you died to your old self, coming up new. Some people say it, talk about it symbolizing maybe uh, like being washed uh, into a new birth. Either way, that's one of the things that we need to ask ourselves. Have we been baptized? Second thing that we need to say, ask ourselves, have we been baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit needs to ignite us. Now, a lot of times we get busy with the world and we forget that God has purposes for us. Uh, let's all stand here actually right now. I know we've been sitting for a while. Let's all stand. So as we identify with this work of the Holy Spirit, that God has purposes and a plan for us. And then the third thing is, are we allowing God to transform, and then we should say us, but are you allowing God to transform you into the person he created you to be? How many know some of us, we're not even sure what that person looks like, right? That's why it's so important to be continually fellowshipping with other believers. Because I promise you, like there's a verse in the Bible that says, he with the, who walks with the wise grows wise. If we never around Christians, we're a lot of times, and, let, and if we're not reading our Bible, we're going to have a hard time really knowing what God expects of us. When we see other Christians striving to help other people experience the love of God, we see other Christians uh, just praying for people to get set free from all the struggles they've been going through, or people to get healed, or to, to heal relationships, marriages, uh, you know, children to their parents, and uh, just all the things that we know God wants to see happen in life. Even though what our country is experiencing now so much racial recon that reconciliation that's needed, but it can really, ultimately, if it doesn't come through Jesus Christ, it we're kind of maybe doing that circular argument kind of thing. At some point, we got to say, Jesus, I need you. At some point, we got to say, Holy Spirit, empower me for the purposes God has for my life. Transform my life. 